<clears throat> All right, I'll call this uh, meeting of the Summit Waller Community Association to order for Tuesday, April 5. And first item is the approval of the board meeting minutes from, uh... oh, and I didn't change that on my own agenda. That should read March 1. And there weren't any corrections, any modifications that anybody shared with Angela. So do we have a motion to approve? So I'll move. Second. Okay. And it's been moved and seconded. We approve the board meeting minutes for the March 1 meeting. All all in favor? Any opposed? Dan, are you opposed? You're uh, muted. <laughs> oh, you're you're for. Okay. <clears throat> and I'll be a little bit uh, slow here as I keep notes. And. Uh, does anybody not have a chance to see the treasurer's report? Do we have a motion regarding the treasurer's report? <laughs> uh, I have a quick question. Yeah. Uh, did our corporate filing fee go from $10 up to $60? That's how much it is, yeah. Huh, that's, that's quite a jump. That's... Uh, well beyond uh, inflation, wow. Yeah, I, I don't know what's happening. It could have something to do with filing hard copy versus uh, online, I don't know. Wow, okay. Yep. So do we have a motion regarding the uh, treasurer's report? I move. Okay. Second. All right, all in, it's been moved and seconded to approve the treasurer's report. All in favor? Aye. Okay. And Gabe, anything uh, for you to report on the web end? Sorry, I got my bite. Okay, no, so. that's cool. <laughs> I just finished quickly. Yeah. Okay, so for the website, yes, um, we've done some changes. I don't know if we're going to talk about it later. I don't think we are. Um, so I can share my screen and show you what we've got. So everyone should be able to see that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so right now, this is the current board of directors me and membership page, which is accessible from community information. You can select this one here. So that's going to get replaced with this right now. It's just got it test page is a holder title but um with this this link will lead to the following page which we have a membership and application and renewal there's a paypal subscribe that can be an annually subscribed thing every year dings their paypal account for 20 bucks and they don't even have to worry about thinking about it if they are a senior they click this link here which takes them to this page and it's just basically the the discounted subscription for that and that's what we're looking at doing. I haven't put it up as live yet. I just want to make sure everybody's okay with how it looks. Mm -hmm. And if there's any changes that you can think of making <clears throat> to the page before I post it as live. Um, would we want the fonts to be a little bit bigger in particular for the seniors? <laughs> hey, uh, you know, that's, hey, that's, hey. it's not a bad idea, but usually people that are uh, hard of vision are actually already doing the font change yeah. themselves to be able to compensate for that. I don't want to double it up and have it look <laughs> half the size of the screen. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, James, actually, let's go back. Uh, go ahead, Larry. I thought, I, could you go back to the uh, list of the uh, board members page? Oh yeah. Looks to, looks to me like we have uh, 10 board members and when we're only supposed to have nine. There's an alternate. Mark, Mark's an alternate. 
I don't know um, if that changes anything. That's 11, that's, there's 11 people listed there. Nine of them are board members. Two of them are alternates. Uh, Chris Gallagher was an alternate. Yeah. So we can only have nine members on the board. Oh. Well, I brought up another topic. That'd be easy enough to fix. Um, if you, if you, if it's the desire for Chris Gallagher to be uh, an official board member, uh, I will be glad to switch with him and become an alternate like uh, Jim Akers was. I can stay an alternate for now. All right. And tonight you're voting because, well, you help us with the quorum. Right. And Mark Gianoble hasn't been uh, to any of our zoom board meetings in quite a while i i think it would be worth the uh, effort to give him a call and find out what's going on with him mm -hmm. because we'd like our alternate board members to uh, participate in our board meetings as well Okay. Uh, anything else on the website, Gabe? This would be it. Um, other than that, I just did some cleaning up of the website based on some things that Angela noticed. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll be adding this button here for WSWC. I want to try to get it on every page on the, the right hand side for the, fir the front page and then subsequent pages that don't have that bar. Like a lot of these pages don't. Mm -hmm. Okay. But uh, be able to get in there and uh, give it to where everybody can click on that from wherever they happen to be. I might just put it up at the top here and have it do the same result. It won't look like this support. It just be a. It will look like the rest of these, but just as a solid link, like the contact is. is. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Sounds More like opportunities for people idea. to see it. Because on our Facebook page, we had at least two or three people say, "I didn't even know there was." Uh, a way we could support financially and you know since then they've uh, i guess they've actually already gone ahead and done it but mm -hmm. they were surprised like i've been here for 23 years whatever i didn't even know and I'm like, okay well now you know and thanks for supporting us going forward all right thank you gabe thanks gabe so current business orange gate park uh, larry reports a whopping 8.5 volunteer hours in the month of March. Must have been some decent weather. That or an awful lot of trash. And then there's the issue of traffic calming. Uh, Larry, do you want to address that, uh, some of the options that you recommended? Yeah, that was uh, uh, 18 and a half hours uh, yep. uh, for the month, month of March. And I haven't heard from... Uh, Scott Bird yet, so um, I've been holding off sending in uh, hours. Um, due to the uh, to the fact that uh, if one were to individually want to become a steward of Orange Gate Park, you have when you sign that form, you're saying that you will not use any kind of power equipment in Orange Gate. And uh, quite frankly, that's a non-starter for me. So I haven't uh, initiated any individual stewardship uh, of Orange Gate. Um, okay, Larry. Talking with Scott. Yeah. Can, can we take care of the traffic call me that you sent the email out about? Oh, uh, the, the yeah. The speed limit okay. and all that? Sure. Um, in our last meeting, uh, Marty Campbell and also Chelsea, his assistant, uh, seemed to be receptive to a uh, the creation of a an ordinance in the future that would reduce the speed limit on 84th Street from 35 miles an hour uh, 
from 50th Avenue to somewhere appropriate uh, west of uh, the park, maybe as far as uh, Vickery, I would think, before you come up over the hill. Um, so I, I would uh, recommend that, uh, that we uh, forward that, that idea to uh, Pierce County Parks and Recreation and also to Marty Campbell's office. And also in thinking about the fact that uh, people are gonna ignore that 25 mile an hour speed limit sign, sign even when the park gets more developed. Um, I think it would be appropriate to forward the idea of a roundabout being installed at 46th Avenue East and 84th Street. And the reason for that is, is that uh, uh, just <clears throat> north of that intersection on 46th, uh, you are going to have the uh, uh, entryway into uh, the uh, parking area and play area and people will park to use the dog park and all that. Also, uh, there's going to be a trailhead established on, off of 84th farther west of that intersection. As you're going up the hill, approximately where Pipeline Road uh, crosses 84th and trying to slow down people so that we don't have accidents in that kind of weird area for traffic being on a hill and people coming eastbound, coming up over the hill, if they're going too fast, we could, we could see some, some uh, near misses or even collisions of people trying to get in and out of uh, the trailhead. So maybe another roundabout there would be appropriate too. That would really slow down traffic on 84th. Mm -hmm. uh, it might even cause people to, to use alternate routes like 72nd to get over to Canyon Road. Uh, off of from uh, Waller Road or 96 perhaps. So I would encourage the uh, community association to forward those two ideas of traffic calming to, uh, to uh, uh, Pierce County uh, uh, Council, our council rep and also to Pierce mm -hmm. County Parks and Recreation. Could I add one thought please? Yeah, go ahead Dan. I, I support Larry's idea. Uh, I've always been concerned about it, but I never really thought about it, to tell you the truth. But the Iron Horse uh, Equestrian Center on 72nd Street, uh, they are going to be, of course, having their horse riders go on the pipeline trail heading south to Orange Gate and past Orange Gate on through. So I, I think it would be important to have some, some mechanism to slow down traffic. It's a perfect storm of problems. You've got a hill, you've got 35 miles an hour, you've got <clears throat> dog park, uh, you know, parking center for people to park, to use the pipeline trail, horses going this way and that way. There needs to be something to curtail the speed and to give people heads up that it's kind of a congested uh, public use area. Mm -hmm. I would and just like to interject that uh, I personally witnessed while I was picking up garbage, uh, horses crossing 84th and some cars had to have, had to come to a very abrupt uh, stop to avoid hitting the horses. And that, and that was just last week. My, my final comment is this, uh, because of the uh, City Light has their, I think it's City Light, if I'm not mistaken, or is it BP, I don't, I don't know who it is, the, the power station that's there. There's plenty of room, plenty of room off the road to create a, a roundabout or several. Does, does anybody uh, thought about, you know, there's pl plenty of room, but uh, the, the engineering and all that, you've got any idea how much that's going to cost per roundabout, what the county figures that, that it costs? probably a lot less than the county getting sued for not putting in uh, mitigation measures when you have a public park divided in half by a county right-of-way. 
Yeah, no, I, I understand that, but uh, uh, there's a lot of crosswalks. Uh, uh, that accident where the, where the girl was killed up there, are they suing the county because there was no sidewalk there? On 128th, I, I can't speak to that. I, I'm just 104th. saying- 104th. No. 104th. Yeah, 104th, 104th, yes. Yeah, well, uh, I, went, I went online and read some estimates on, on that. Uh, I don't think it's feasible to do it for less than a, probably a, a couple million dollars, and it'll take about three years of study to find out whether they can do it. Oh, can I just? Uh, that's all. That's okay. If you guys want to vote on it, that that's fine. I I personally do not like roundabouts, but that's just my opinion. Personally, I don't like roundabouts either. Whenever I run into one in Lakewood, I always think there's some kind of a, a city mechanism. All I'm saying, whatever the deal is, 84th Street has, it's providing a public park. Something needs to be done. Yeah, well, there's nothing wrong. I don't have any problem with speed bumps and I don't have any problem on, on enforcement. And there's there's not a street in, uh, in our Summit Waller that has been regularly even pretend to be enforced uh, for uh, the traffic violations, speeding, whatever you want. Well, you have uh, staffing issues. You don't, you know, there aren't enough uh, deputies to be running uh, speed enforcement everywhere with everything else. Um, and in regard to the 25 mile an hour, um, request. Oh, and by the way, Chelsea, welcome. Thank you for joining us tonight. I knew I was going to get called on. <laughs> <laughs> but um, anyway, I was just going to say, without some sort of traffic calming measure, the 25 mile an hour is pointless. And I will say that I'm in the camp of saying traffic circles are good. Traffic circles are effective. I have no problem using them. I've driven them a lot. Um, it's just something to get used to, and it is a way to get people to slow down. Um, I was thinking maybe at 46th and also at 50th, so that you bookend the two major pedestrian sections and where you might have, well, actually, I guess you wouldn't have a horse crossing there. Um, the people who are coming down actual pipeline, I'm not sure how that's going to be engineered gang across 84th, but it is a little bit problematic because you do have people coming downhill at a pretty good rate of speed at a point where the road, where a pipeline crosses. So I guess it depends upon how the county engineers getting from one side to the other there. You're right, I think that's gonna be a difficult issue with, a lot of study behind it. Yep. My, my last comment would be this. Um, at a minimum, there needs to be some pretty aggressive speed bumps there. I agree with that. I mean, you, you have a public park with a county road going through the middle of it. That's problematic. That's all I'm gonna say. Yep. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with with both and with everybody really about some sort of traffic calming measure um, because it's, you're coming down, coming from east, uh, west to east, you're, you're coming over a rise and dropping down right on top where the crossing's going to be. So hoping that the rumble strips and some, you know, maybe something you're over speed sign when you're coming over that rise before you drop down into that area that's going to be <clears throat> a problem. Is that that that's something we can put into place with the in with the 25 mile 25 speed limit because we know they're going to go through there at 40 anyways mm -hmm. but um 50 well, is I, the new 35 you know yeah i think uh some overhead flashing cautions light at the uh apex of the hill would be appropriate too there with uh warning pedestrian horse crossing yeah i would support that for sure. Uh, hey guys, it's Chelsea. Is it okay if I jump in here? Please. So, uh, love everything you're saying. I also, um, I know that speed that um, 
roundabouts are super expensive, but the good news is, is that whenever we talk to our traffic engineers, we say like, here's the intersection where we're having issues or here's the stretch of road. Like, what are your recommendations and what are the different things that we can do with our funding? So it's nice because we can reach out and say, hey, what are our options here? And then we could even bring that back to you and say, hey, what's your preference? What do you think is most appropriate? With the Iron Horse facility, I know they're going through a lot of the permitting stuff right now. And so as they're beginning to open up more and really build out their, their beautiful facility that they have there, a big piece of that is also going to be what kind of signage needs to be put up and what kind of traffic impact is going to happen there. So I know that they're in the process with that, with planning and public works. You might hear my dogs in the background. Sorry about that. And we are also doing our traffic impact um, we're able to like put projects forward. And I know I've been in conversation with Larry about some of the projects we're recommending for our traffic funds that we have. And one of the things that we're putting in there is a couple of the different, like you need to drive past and it's like, this is how fast you're going. Uh, a couple of those that are portable so that we can put them up in different areas as speeding continues to be an issue and um, be able to move those around and just help to you know, bring that awareness. Cause I know sometimes I'm like, oh my gosh, I did not realize that I am for sure speeding here. But you know, when you're just jamming out to music, like spring is here, music's nice, you just kind of forget. So, um, and I know we're also um, traffic improvements around Lidford Park uh, have had several people reach out. So I know that's also at the, at the top of our list, but it's always great to hear what you're seeing. And that way we're able to send it to our traffic engineers mm -hmm. and. What are you hearing? What kind of studies do we have? What data can we get? And then we, um, Councilmember Campbell uses that to inform like every decision. Thank you. Yeah, I was thinking that maybe what it would be best is if we, in a resolution, or not a resolution, but uh, in a request, um, ask for traffic calming, traffic mitigation measures, and advice from en county engineering of what would be the most effective for that location? Because there are certainly also, as Dan brought up, legal liability issues, anything that the county does with traffic. And so they're going to be the ones that are going to be aware of what those issues are and how best to deal with them. Is there, um, is there any way that we could inquire if the county could, um, say limited that to no commercial traffic because there's cement trucks, log trucks, dump trucks. Uh, I guess I'd be more afraid of those through a park area than I would a, a passenger vehicle. Hmm. I know we've had to do some stuff like that in the past, um, particularly in um, like residential, like streets where there's a lot of residential homes, but there's also a lot of um, moving trucks that happen and it, it's really loud and it's kind of at all hours. So I can ask about that and see what the kind of restrictions are around that. I know it's was like a super long, tedious process and you have to like get it, the road classified as this, and then it gets classified as this, and then there's signage and then there's enforcement. So, but there's like there's anything as possible, right, Don? So we'll see. Oh, thank you. Okay. So I have a couple Larry. questions for Yeah, uh, Chelsea, I have a couple questions for you. Hit me uh, with it. Isn't it, isn't it normal that uh, uh, going through a park, the uh, speed limit is 25 miles an hour? Um, I'm not sure about that, but I can ask. And I know there's been some conversations, particularly at the city of Tacoma around uh, dropping the speed limit down to like 20 miles an hour in certain neighborhoods too. I believe that was like kind of brought up at the, um, at the county as well. So, uh, but we know that that's a really big way to improve areas and um, to improve the walkability of areas. And then of course, whenever you're improving the walkability, whenever you're doing traffic improvements and working to mitigate speed, you're also helping to make sure that street racers are not uh, on your street as well. So we're looking, we're exploring a lot of options and a lot of investments right now. Now, uh, would my second question is, wouldn't it uh, also be appropriate for Pierce County Parks and Recreation to suggest traffic calming scenarios to the county? 
I'm sure that they do that when they do part of their like park planning piece because they just do such an amazing job of thinking through like every element, but I can reach out and get some more information. Are you thinking specifically, specifically Lidford or Orange Gate? Um, specifically Orange Gate at the moment. Okay, and I know that we have some more signage coming up at Orange Gate as well. Could you repeat that? I didn't quite catch that. I know that um, that we had gotten like an update about some more signage that was going to be posted at Orange Gate, so I can work to get an update on that. Okay. Um, you had also, you and Marty had said that you were receptive to an ordinance in the future that would uh, limit the uh, uh, speed limit through uh, on 84th through Orange Gate at 25 miles an hour. Is that still a possibility? We haven't discussed it directly, but I'm sure, you know, anything is on, on the table. So I, I we and, have, it's the last time that he brought it up and proposed it. So I'll make sure to, to flag that for him. Uh, would that basically have to come from Pierce County Parks and Recreation? I'm not sure how it works with speed limits because I don't know where, where it is as far as like, I know there's attachments to federal funding with, with speed limits too. So um, I'll have to do some more research on that, but I love research. So that's great. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It looked like there's a number of traffic calming uh, possibilities that have been uh, uh, stated uh, this evening. So uh, other than roundabout, there are other traffic calming uh, scenarios also, but most of those would rely on the speed limit to be reduced from 35 to something lower. There's just infinite. That, yeah. Yeah, and I, I know there's at least four points from 50th on up to the top of the hill west of, uh, on the west end where horses cross uh, 84th, at least four points. And I've, I've seen horses going across in at least four different areas, three of them between 50th Avenue East and uh, 46th Avenue East. And then of course, pipeline, pipeline <clears throat> road. Okay, Dan, I'm going to appoint you parliamentarian. Should we have a uh, resolution on this or uh, can we just go ahead and send a letter to the county asking for a change in the speed yeah. limit and some mitigation. You're asking the wrong guy. You should ask Larry that question. I would say we just uh, take a thumbs up, a down vote and send a letter. Okay. Well, how about a motion from somebody? I, I would, well, somebody make a motion, I'll second it. Larry? Uh, I move that the Summit Waller Community Association uh, write a letter to both Pierce County Parks and Recreation and Pierce County Council requesting ordinances that would provide traffic calming remedies for 84th Street in or at Orange Gate Park. And Pipeline Road. Okay. All right. And I'm assuming Dan seconded. All in favor? Okay. Don, are you not in favor or are you abstaining? I'm, uh, I'm going to sit on the side because I think that uh, what, what you're suggesting is uh, by common sense what uh, parks, trails, and uh, traffic engineering is already taking under advisement. So abstaining. <laughs> abstaining. Yeah, well, that's that's All right, moving, moving on. Uh, Jen, you want to give us a little bit more of an update on the uh, newsletter? You didn't like my three emails updating you already today? Well, if there's <laughs> anything else, I asked Angela if she's, she, well, let me back up. Angela wrote a little message saying that the Canyon Road article was forthcoming. 
-hmm. And I said, I have enough room for one article is one more important than the other in her opinion. And she thought they were both important if I could squeeze them in. Um, I really don't have room for, I have room for one piece. It's either the Grange or the Canyon Road without adding a whole nother page. That's where I'm at. Mm -hmm. So if anyone has any thoughts about one or the other, she wanted me to try to squeeze them both in. I don't know how I would do that, but she, I, I mean, I could always play around with it a little bit more, make font smaller. It's that readability thing. I'm trying, I know we have a lot of people who don't really, or maybe won't read something if the font is at size 10. I'm one of them. <laughs> That's yeah. what happens when you get older. And white so. space. Uh, Gabe? Yeah. yeah. So when you mentioned Canyon Road, I'm not too sure what, what is that referencing? I need to go back and look at notes. I, I an update on the, the construction, the progress. Oh, the, I see. Okay. The Canyon Road construction project. Okay. They, okay. Right. Well, and that could possibly just be even a oh, really she, brief link, you know, like a comment with a link to the county's website where they have updated information on that. Maybe my little note from last month's meeting said it just says Canyon Road dash Letitia. So I'm thinking somebody said something about contacting Letitia. So mm -hmm. maybe I could do something like that, put the link into what she says or I don't know. Okay, so just going back that to that point I was asking about what Canyon Road is versus the Grange, because the Grange is part of our local community itself, not just the road going mm -hmm. through it. Mm -hmm. um, and my, in my opinion, I think it might make more sense to highlight them as we're trying to build our relationship with the Grange. That would be just my opinion. Do you know who was going to write that piece? Was it you or Angela? I was told you were the two board members who attended that meeting. All I did was attend. Uh, I uh, submitted to join, and um, I'm in contact with them to help them with their Facebook page. I helped them get that back. Uh -huh. um, 2013 was the last time it got. No, 2015 something got posted. There was the last time, and then after that, whoever was running it just kept the posting. I don't run it anymore. Go to this other place, and mm -hmm. that's that's all anybody got from them. We actually were able to take it back. Um, not take it back. We were actually get, be able to get it back finally. So, but but that's that's separate part from the newsletter um with the newsletter if we can do that if Rhonda is the contact that we have for the mm -hmm. Grange if you want I can reach out to her see if she wants to write a short blurb do you I have, have a... her I have her contact okay. info I can reach out and ask her yeah she doesn't live very far from you either so oh yeah so right. yeah so um she'd be the contact to see if she's going to write or somebody else but just something short to say hey we're regaining and traction here's our facebook page come check it out it's something that simple might be all you need leaving okay. space for a link to the canyon road project well maybe two little simple things will fit just right in my little space that i have left and that's it once i have that i am ready to send it to you all to just double check to make sure well i'll print it out and make sure everything's lined up but you know set of eyes double check everything send it back to me and then i'll contact the printer if you can I, I fill can, it with just generic text, like a Lorem Epson text block and see how many words fit in there and give a word count to the people saying you get X many words. And then that'll at least dictate the space you have available for them. Okay. Question. Larry, just saying, Dan, Larry, do you have a question or did your hand just left up from earlier? <laughs> no, I, I do have uh, two points. One is uh, portable lighted signs just went up today on 84th and and Canyon and and also on Canyon Road, indicating that construction on Canyon Road from basically just north of 84th to 72nd will begin on April 11th. And the second point is, um, isn't the newsletter going out predicated on when we decide when our general membership and community meeting is? I was going to mention that next. That's the, I need that date. Uh, so I'm not well, sure. That's the next the thing on the agenda. There we go. So I, because you left that little spot blank in your, your 
president's yep. message and I have it highlighted in yellow so I don't send it out <laughs> as is. Yep. Uh -huh. Dan? Yeah, my comment was uh, briefly, or actually a question. Pierce County has a website for Canyon Road? Yeah, there should be one for the uh, Canyon Road expansion project, yes. Yeah, I think all you have to say is for information regarding Canyon Road construction, please see this website. That's that's all. And then that gives you more room for uh, the Grange. The Grange. Yep. All right. Thank okay. you. Thank you. I and can potentially have this newsletter out this week. It's spring break, Brian's home, taking care of children. And I have some time on my hands. So if I okay. get all the little pieces together, I can have it done. Always nice to be done early. It would be. Okay. And welcome Councilor Me Council Member Campbell. And uh, also for my notes, um, John, John Tacoma, would you like to introduce yourself? That's uh, Goodspeed here. I'm I'm here. Oh, oh, okay. John Goodspeed. Okay. <laughs> so you're so you've been hey, so we got somebody <laughs> besides me taking notes. Great. Okay. Ah, oh, that's better. Now I know. <laughs> and Larry, yeah, we got uh, Mark Gianoble here too. Great. Okay. So let's see here general membership meeting and I won't normally it's in May I won't be here in May Angela won't be here in May either I won't be here in June um I mean I I'm not going to say you can't have it if I'm not here it's you know what people would want to do when you think the best time would be um any thoughts on when we might want to have it mm. I think Larry's. I have, a, I have a couple of suggestions. Uh, if we were to have it in May, uh, not only will Angela not be there and Bob will not be there, uh, Bunny from the Mid County Community Center will not be there as well. Um, and in June, uh, Bob will not be there. I'm not sure whether Angela will be there or not. I probably will not be there. So in talking with uh, Bunny, uh, she indicated that uh, later on in June, there are quite a few dates available if we wanted to have uh, our meeting later on in June, perhaps. Uh, I'm trying to get my calendar here. Yeah, you've got uh, any any time after the 14th of uh, June, uh, Wednesdays and Thursdays would be available. Even, even I think, uh, let's see, the 14th would not be available because there could be a uh, mid-county Land Use Advisory Commission meeting that day, that's Flag Day. But uh, like Tuesday, the 21st, 22nd, or 23rd. You know, it, some time ago, we okay. used to have our yes. meetings like, uh, the, like the third week, the third Tuesday of uh, May. So having it, uh, let's say the third Tuesday of June, when everybody <laughs> could be there, or the Wednesday the 22nd or Thursday the 23rd. I think we've even had uh, prior meetings on a Thursday as well. Um, for, well, I'll say 22nd or 23rd would be of that week would be better for me because the 21st I have a, a commission meeting that night. Sure. Like I said, we've had Thursday uh, general membership and community meetings uh, in the past. I couldn't tell you what year, but you know. So, so you my, recommendation, my recommendation would be to uh, uh, have our general membership and community meeting when everybody can be there, having it at the uh, Mid County Community Center you know, at a time when 
our president and vice president uh, and uh, the executive director of the community, community center could also be there. Okay, which might be say 22nd, 23rd. Any thoughts about those dates? Pick one. So how about uh, June 22nd? Anything's okay with me. Okay, uh, and, uh, we'll shoot for June 22nd. How about the rest of the group? Fine. Okay. Yeah. All right. Do we Hi, have Bob? a time? Yeah, huh? Do we have a time? Could, do do what we have people anybody people? who is against shooting for the 22nd? Yeah, I can't be there on the 22nd. I okay. Have a, I have a council meeting on the 22nd. But, how about uh, the 23rd? 20... Larry, how about the 23rd? That works fine. Okay. Everybody else, any issues with the 23rd? I was made. Okay, well, let's shoot for the 23rd then of June, Thursday the 23rd. Okay. And what time? Time. Seven o'clock. Usually we uh, kind of start at 6.30, I think in the past. Uh, oh, okay. 6.30 six, six to seven is kind of a meet and greet time period. Uh, yeah, open doors at 6.30 and then meeting starts at seven. Right. Okay. Do we need to double check this with the community center calendar? Is that where we're having it, the community center? Yeah. So do yeah. we need to double check with the calendar? Uh, yeah, we probably should, uh, and I will call her tomorrow. So okay. first, first choice is twenty third. Second right. choice is twenty second. Then, right? If for some yep. reason we can't get twenty third. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, could could I just yeah. add? Yeah. Um, the twenty third was okay with Larry, but not the twenty second. Could we go the 23rd and the second alternative would be the 24th? Friday night? Well. No. Nope. Yeah, Friday night, night might not be so good. Um, something else that Larry and I had discussed was maybe even a Saturday unless people would rather not do a Saturday. Oh no, wait a minute, Bunny isn't there on Saturdays. Yeah. The community center is closed on Fridays, uh, but I'm not, I think maybe Bunny would be open to the possibility of coming back on uh, Friday, but I'd have to talk with her about that. Yeah, Fridays, I think it, Friday night meeting wouldn't have much for um, attendance, but I think we're far enough out that we can probably get that 23rd. I don't know how much activity there is in the evenings. Okay, so um, now you've showed up, Council Member Campbell. Do you have any updates that you'd like to share with us? Thank you for that. Uh, thank you, everyone. Um, always challenging to find a date to have something, so uh, I applaud the efforts. Uh, Marty Campbell, Pierce County Council. Uh, earlier today, we did pass our solid waste uh, strategic plan, and we, I work to add a new element into it. Normally it's about where we handle our bigger uh, solid waste, where the landfills are, what our long-term strategy is. But I've added an element that is litter and uh, illegal dumping. And while we haven't filled out completely what our strategy around uh, the litter and illegal dumping we see everywhere around our community, I'm sure each of you could instantly tell me five stories um, and five more beyond that. Uh, we see it, we know it, and so I want to make sure it's embedded into our long-term and strategic planning so that we have a uh, uh, long-term strategy, not just let's get some volunteers out there. We need to do more volunteers, critically important, getting out there, cleaning it up. We thank you, but what do you do with it once you're done? What do you, you know, we want to make sure that we're kind of closing that loop so that it's uh, a bigger plan out there. So happy, happy to be working on that. Um, Two weeks ago, we also passed our strategic plan on homelessness. 
um, investing $9 million to make sure that we're setting up a program that works, uh, bringing in a whole variety of elements to give people uh, places to go, but hold them accountable um, also uh, for, uh, for any activity they may be doing, but making sure that we have the services that meet their needs. Uh, so if it's mental health, getting them connected to mental health services. If it's financial, getting them connected to financial help, uh, stability services, a place to stay, uh, whatever they need. So what we've really been doing is laying down some really good long-term strategic plan that over the next um, several weeks and months as they come into fruition, we'll really begin to attack many of the issues that we've seen with growing intensity across our, our area. And it's, I, I hear it from every part of the district. It's a local manifestation of national trends that we're seeing, but I don't simply want to leave it up to that. I want to make sure that we're working locally to address many of those issues. Um, did also have a chance within the last uh, uh, two weeks to attend the funeral for Deputy Collada, who um, I know served in Edgewood out of the South Hill, so occasionally would be backing up within our community. So uh, our condolences from the council go to him, uh, his family. With that, I would open it up for any questions. Dan, nice cat. <laughs> yeah. Didn't even notice it, did you? <laughs> 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 My wife likes cats. <laughs> it's okay. So, well, I'm, like not, I'm not sure if you uh, were here for a discussion about uh, the uh, traffic through Orange Gate. Uh, Chelsea provides some very good feedback. But what we're planning to do is put together a letter requesting a reduction in speed through the on 84th through Orange Gate, and also an examination by. Um, County traffic engineering of appropriate speed mitigation, speed uh, calming, or traffic calming measures that could be put in place to make that speed reduction effective. Should I send that to your office with a copy to Pierce County Parks, or what? How should I uh, address this? Go and send it to our office, and and we'll go out from there because it's part of. Uh... Pierce County Parks is part of road engineering. Um, the, uh, uh, you know, there's a couple different uh, parts that are gonna have to touch this. Mm -hmm. And I also understand we're looking for some signage uh, uh, for the horses near Iron Horse. And so that's something that I think we can uh, assist with also. Excellent, thank you. That's how much Chelsea's on it. Mentioned it earlier, it's already happening. <laughs> so, um, so she, uh, she'll fill me in on, on some of that, but we will, uh, get that letter over to us. Then that gives us something to, to work from. And you can include all those items in there. Then we can just work it like a punch list. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Uh, next item is a street light request, a modification of that, Larry. Yeah, I sent uh, each of you, uh, uh, some recommendations after I uh, kind of went down 44th uh, Avenue East and uh, stopped at Lidford and kind of surveyed the situation. We had talked about uh, requesting a, a street light at 106, excuse me, at 60th Street East and 44th Avenue to kind of light up that intersection because of uh, basically uh, two reasons. One, it's a, an intersection that goes into uh, a housing development west of 40, 44th Avenue. And also it's a bus stop for kids getting on the bus. And it's kind of dark in the morning, especially uh, during the uh, uh, late fall and uh, winter months. Uh, I, I also talked with a few people uh, that I know live off of uh, 44th Avenue. And I noticed that uh, 53rd Street East intersection with 44th Avenue. Yeah, okay, let's, yeah, let's. Okay, in regards to Lidford. Uh, Slow down there, you're speeding through the neighborhood. Where are we at? <laughs> yeah. Okay, at 50, 53rd Street, East and 44th Avenue. Uh, 
that is a that was pretty busy intersection each time I went down there because that that 53rd Street goes east and it services all of those people that live along 53rd all the way out to the rim and then all this all the houses out there on the rim the 53rd Street. 53rd street east. Yeah, that's, that's that's a lot further away from the park though that's why i was okay no i under i understand that yeah uh my suggestion is is that we expand our street light request to cover 53rd street east 56th street east 56 okay there's 53rd, and there is a light pole there on both sides of the street. And at 56th Street, there's a light pole there, a utility pole. And, Sorry, and that's my zoom's a, off. A, yeah, that's a fairly busy street that goes down, and, and it actually comes out uh, at 50th and uh, 72nd. So, um, I, I felt that uh, there should be a street light there as well. And then getting up by Lidford, uh, 56th, excuse me, 59th Street Court East seems to be the best location. Yeah, 59th Street Court East with an existing light pole. Uh, would probably be the best location to lining up that school bus stop. Which is right over That's in this right area there. here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then if you look uh, in the distance, you'll see that the uh, light utility pole on 100 uh, that on 60th is is kind of back away from the intersection and it has a lot of wires on it. And I'm thinking that pole resembles the one at 48th Street East and Waller Road, which they said you couldn't put a light, a light there. So directly across the street is. It's a little off uh, to the side. Yeah, it's the court. Yeah, this one here. The, yeah, it's a little off to the side, and it's got a lot of wires too. And there's already I don't know light there. One, yeah, uh, but it's facing the other way. Uh, it's possible that you could have a street light on either one of those two poles uh, to kind of help light up that intersection a little bit. That's why I said the one at 59th Street Court East seems to have the best possibility of lighting up the bus stop that we're concerned about. And that might be something where county engineering would have a good idea of what would be the best way to solve that? Larry, do you know if there are any other um, bus stops going down 44th? Uh, not that I'm aware of, but I'm sure there are. Okay, uh, there's a smattering of them. Uh, I, I'm on 44th, so there's uh, at least two more, but they're like on pretty much on like corner of private property, not that thing, nothing like the park here. Okay, because the only thing I, what I'm thinking of is the only reason we would really that somebody might want one in there is for um you know the safety of you know you've got children young people out there when it's dark otherwise as dan's pointed out in the past this is a rural area um i want to know if uh the people in the area if this is something that they really desire you know, if they feel like there's a need for it before we went ahead with adding this to our current request. Because this is a stop that's at the edge of the park where down 60th Street, this direction, they have the housing track that all the kids come up here and this is where they wait for the bus. So there's a lot more condensement of kids yeah, waiting for the bus here versus some of the other stops are just like two or three kids. Yeah, so that would definitely be, you know, a place that I would suggest that would be worthwhile. Um, you know, I'd want to know a little bit more before requesting any of the other, before our taking it upon ourselves to say that people in this neighborhood need a couple more stoplights, or I mean, not stoplights, but street lights. I know, according to uh, Chelsea, uh, she said that uh, the 
uh, street light at, a, at 60th and 44th Avenue East. Uh, we didn't need to uh, email her uh, a, an email requesting that. She had already uh, gotten that written down and had, and, and uh, Marty and her had heard that uh, loud and clear. Um, I'm only saying that the per couple of people I talked to who live uh, on the rim off of 53rd uh, thought that a street light at uh, 53rd and 44th would be nice. Okay. So then do you want to make a uh, motion on this then? For 53rd? Yeah. No, I, I think I th the people on the rim aren't the ones that have to uh, live underneath another street light. I'm for mm -hmm. dark skies to start with, so I'm not in favor of suggesting another street light at this time until we have further input from the immediate na neighborhood. I'm also a fan of dark skies, and so I, I love the dark skies initiative. One thing I do know is that our new street lights are the LED, so that they're more downward directional and they don't have as much light pollution that comes off of them. Uh, that being said, we still don't want it, but just know that uh, going forward, there'll be uh, less upward light coming off of various street lights. And I'd like to point out that my email pointed out that uh, uh, Tacoma Power has been uh, changing out the uh, sodium lights uh, to LED lights and all of the street lights around our around the area that I can see have now been switched into LED, including the ones surrounding uh, Orange Gate. And as in response to Don, uh, we haven't talked to neighbors at the intersection about street lights before. We've uh, put them, we've had them installed. And, I don't think our community associations had any complaints about about them to date. It is dark in the mornings and having a light on school kids, I think is important. People drive fast, fiddle with their radios. It's icy, different, different scenarios for every driver and having a, a light showing those bodies waiting for the bus in those dark mornings, I think is important. Yeah. My comment, uh, you know, I like dark skies. This is a rural area. I don't like street lights, but when you get the bus stop early in the morning at 53rd and 44th at that corner of Lidford Park, is that what we're talking about, uh, Larry? Uh, no, we're not. That's uh, farther north. Oh, I'm sorry. That's where I thought we were. Yeah, farther north at no. the 53. You want me to put it back yeah. up on the screen for you? The well, one at 60th, 60th and 44th Avenue is not not the not in question here. It's the one at 53rd. Now this one's not a this one is not uh, in the conversation right now. It's 53rd. Well, I'm directing my comments to where the bus stop is located. I believe it's near Lidford Park. Am I correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. Could, could we uh, shine the light on the area where the kids get on the school buses near Lidford Park? Well, that one's already, already in the works. We've already discussed and approved a request for a light somewhere at that intersection by the, by the uh, bus stop. Larry's email that came out was about requesting a couple more lights going farther north on 44th? Yeah, 53rd is this intersection here. Um, it's a dead end street and 44th. And I believe the kids are in this area by the shelter when I've driven by and seen them. Um, and then the 56th street, which actually is kind of a continuation or was it that was? Yeah. My, Even though that's a dead end, it that goes all the way out to the rim. It services a lot of houses. It does, yeah, yes. I, I, and then 56 trees right there, here. I see, and I don't yeah, know where they I, wait here. That's a fuzzy picture. 
I think county traffic would have a good idea of whether or not uh, the type of traffic and any incidents that have been involved there would necessitate light versus if we've got uh, young people who are waiting in the dark for a bus. It'll become a bigger issue once the uh, daylight savings gets stuck and and we're stuck. If if that actually goes through the what the Senate now has to go through there, but if we no longer do the hour long shift. To become more prominent during the winter. Well, to conclude my comment, where kids are waiting for buses, I think that's a uh, an area that might need some lighting. Um, as far as the rest of it goes, I, I think that it's up to the people who live there uh, to request lighting on their own. They don't need to rely on us. And Gabe, you probably know more about this since you live on 44th, but I think it's up to them to request street lights and not for us to go around the community trying to put lights everywhere. But where there are kids, uh, getting on school buses and that's where they congregate, I, I would support a, a light station or locations. So maybe what we could do is find out from uh, Puyallup School District, just you know where the, those locations are and you know, how often, if at all, those locations change, you know, depending upon number of students in various areas. Sure. Mm. And I could certainly contact, yeah, go ahead. Oh, finish yeah. your sentence, but I want oh. to be next. Well, I can contact uh, the school district transportation, find out what uh, uh, bus stops they have along 44th. And we can continue this next month. Okay. So we've talked about wanting streetlights at 48th and Waller and how that utility pole is not not one they want to put a light on but we've never discussed any other kind of traffic calming there what about maybe using rumble bumps if a street light is never going to happen is that what they're called rumble bumps or rumble strip well we we had requested a a new light pole be installed at 48th Street East and Waller Road, uh, and I don't know well, where that the neighbor, is. The, the neighbor who lives on that corner, his name is Bob Reed, and he's the one that noticed that a street light had gone up across the street from me, and he asked Scott Muller about that and how come one wasn't put up on 48th and Waller, where he was expecting one to be put up. And Scott told him there wasn't any money to put one up. And, but he didn't answer why went, one went up, up across the street from my house. Not, hmm. I'm not complaining about it. I'm just saying that he's the one that noticed it before I did. Is the light that was put up across from your street on a brand new pole? Mm -mm. Okay. Yeah, the poles that are over there at 40th and Waller, they're just overly congested with wires and stuff. So mm -hmm. that's why they're not wanting to put more up on it. And, and that could be the case at 60th and 44th Avenue, both those poles at 60th and uh, well, 60th Street Court East and also 60th Street East, those two poles have a lot of wires on them, both of them. Hmm. Well, anyway, I was wondering if we could explore maybe that rumble strip before you get to the stop. There's a sign saying that Waller Road is coming up, but people just fly past that sign and it's a dangerous intersection. Mm -hmm. You mean on 44th uh, Street East coming towards Waller Road? 48. Or 48, where it, excuse me. Where it makes the T. Oh, coming down off of uh, Vickery and 36th Avenue. Is that what you're referring to? Or farther? Well, let's see here. Look no, at my 40, own map. 48th ends at Waller. Well, it doesn't end. It, oh. It, cross, it crosses over to Dick, where Dixon, that street where he goes up yep. to Dixon. But it, yeah, it's down at the bottom of the hill of 36 and also almost the end of Vickery and it cuts across. Okay. Mm -hmm. Where exactly? Are you talking about where you want the rumble strips at? 
okay, right where the picture is, uh, somewhere right there to see there's no line. People come, people don't even stop. They just turn so right. About, and, talking coming out on 48th oh. this way. We're, uh, we're so coming down yes, yes, yes. Okay, so right there, right there, right there. So you see how it's it's sloping downhill. Most of the traffic turns right, and they just start turning. That's my running route. I come out of my driveway up the road, and I turn there every day, and I run that strip back and forth. I run the whole whatever, but. I see those cars every day. They come, I have to avoid them. I have to watch for them. They don't even stop when they're turning right. They just fly down that hill and they start to edge around. They kind of take a quick look at the left to see there's no one there and they go. And then when you're, when it's dark and you're turning from Waller onto that road, right where you're looking right there, when you're turning left, you're in the right-hand lane turning left up there. That is a weird angle. Right here, it looks normal in the picture, but it's a funky angle. And without that light there, it's really oh, yeah. it curves back, a tricky yeah. one. Mm -hmm. And all the poles have lots of utility, except for this one. Yeah. Yep. And Bob, Bob Reed is always complaining, and he's got the ear of the neighbors across the street, and they're complaining a lot, I guess, and I'm hearing it from them as well. That they well, I'm like wondering why, done. why can't they put a street light on the well? On this I don't know if a street light and highlighting is going to make a difference as far as the traffic stopping where they're supposed to stop. And there's, the, and there's not even a painted but, line. Yeah, it's one of those things where it's hard to break poor driving habits. A rumble strip lets people know something's coming up that they're not going to anticipate, but a light will let them see what they're running through. But I mean, for as far as safety goes, it's, you know, for pedestrians crossing there or making it well lit for all sorts of traffic in this area, it's just a, I don't know if rumble strips are the, or there's a solution for people just going ahead. They'll run past the rumble strips straight through the stop sign anyways. Well, it slows them down though. And the thing is, I'm not the only person who's a runner on this road. I am noticing for the past two years, there are lots of people who walk that and run that same route. At five o'clock today, I passed three other joggers. Uh, there's people who come from the view rim estates and they walk the route with their dogs. It's becoming, it's, it's pretty popular walking area actually. Yeah, what, what slows people down and makes them stop at a stop sign? That, that's the question. What type of, I mean, I don't have the answer. Obviously, someone that deals with traffic knows those things that work and what don't work. So something needs to be done to help encourage people to properly stop and make sure it's a safe crossing for everybody. Hmm. Whether it's a light, a rumble strip, a combination of the two or something else. Deer crossing signs. <laughs> <laughs> you put a you put a speed they bump don't at stop the top for of people but they stop for animals <laughs> well you've got a member of the council here who's uh heard your comments so you've been heard um i feel heard thank you <laughs> <laughs> and i will have oh, this armadillo here. crossing if we put yeah. an armadillo they'll be like what <laughs> oh <laughs> Perfect. Yes. Moose. I vote for it. Yeah. And I will contact, uh, so I said, the uh, school district transportation regarding uh, where the bus stops are on 44th. So new business. Um, Gabe, what can you tell us about what went on at the uh, Grange meeting? So the Grange meeting was great um there was a huge turnout it was really surprising to see how many people showed i didn't get a head count but um when i went there last year it was about four times the amount of people that showed up to the meeting so it was really encouraging a lot of people signed up the only unfortunate thing is they didn't actually say the next steps for people that actually applied they, people paid their money in they signed up there's actually supposed to be a second meeting to go to to get approved and in 
So that's something that they didn't communicate. I don't know how they deal with that. It's not just here, take my money. I want to support you. It's like, no, by becoming a member, it also means you have to say, yes, I'm a member and stand up and be approved. Um, apparently in the, however long this grange has been going, people say, I don't see any, I have not met one person that has not been approved coming in. It's just, that's a formality they want everybody to go through. So I don't know where that came through. Um, I mean, works with, one of the contacts there, her name's Rhonda, and she is uh, the one that helped that I helped get back into the Facebook page so they can then, it's their most popular page. It's got four or 500 people that are already likes on it. It's the one that had the traffic the most up until a certain point where it just stopped and we got her back into that. And now she's starting, to, I'm seeing her doing it. I'm, she's managing that page to stay in contact. Beyond that, that's where things kind of got left off because I haven't been able to go back to then to get to become a full fledged member at this point. I, I know Angela signed up as well. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> and the last thing on the agenda, the pipeline lit trail letter of support. Um, the county is currently applying for some federal funds and will be applying for uh, state funds to help pay for engineering from the next section of the pipeline trail, which will go from Orange Gate to Dollar Park. And so I sent a letter to our um, federal legislators in support of that uh, request. So that's uh, what that's about. Um, I did get a chance to see what the county had laid out for uh, our legislators and it was quite interesting some of the actual statistical information they had about the level of income in our area compared with other parts of the county um health indicators you know various things that show that if we can get this um recreational trail in that it could certainly help with. And also it's something that, you know, when you're in an area that doesn't necessarily have as much means as others, um, frequently those places have a harder time advocating for themselves. So this is a nice effort by county parks to try to advocate for a community that doesn't have as much as other communities in the county. So, that's all I have on the agenda. Anything have anybody have anything else that they uh, would like to add? Dan. Yeah, Bob. Um, Canyon Rib. I, I promised you folks via email that I would update you briefly on that. Um, as you know, on Canyon Rim Estates, uh, the Superior Court uh, reversed uh, examiner Casso <clears throat> and remanded it back to the new hearing examiner. I feel pretty confident that the Superior Court was gonna reverse and remand. I told you folks that last time on a 70% probability. It's now gone to the hearing examiner and we'll, this is kind of a test if you, in my mind because we have a new hearing examiner and we'll see what he uh, decides to do with this case. Uh, the court concluded that examiner could so made an error. Let's see if uh, the new examiner can do it right. Um, I hope politics doesn't get involved they should just look at it, look at the law, look at the regs, the policies, and make an appropriate decision. We'll find out. Uh, that's all I can tell you. Okay, thank you. Larry? Oh, yeah, uh, getting back to our uh, community, uh, general membership and community meeting uh, that we've uh, decided to be on the 23rd of June. Um, if that isn't gonna work with Bunny, um, how do people feel about this the week before the 16th? I'm okay with it. I'm okay. I'm fine with it. I'm okay. Okay. With All right. I just I just want to have a little leeway when I talk with her tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Councilman Campbell, how how are you, what's your availability on the 23rd uh, of June and the 16th of June? If it is your annual meeting, I will make time to be there. Barring oh, wow. as long as I am uh, around, I will make make time, and I don't have any trips planned at this time. Okay, all right, that's good to know. And Chelsea, Chelsea dropped off. Otherwise, I uh, 
<laughs> if I can't be there, Chelsea will be there, but I should be there. Yeah, okay. Okay. So, nothing else. Do we have a motion to adjourn? We'll do it. moved. Second. <laughs> and seconded. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Uh, see you all next month.